Hamilton County. We know that. We're asking a lot of you. We are all in this together. I need you to help me and help your neighbors. In your high traffic area. frequently. Wash your hands. Practice social distancing. Stay Yes. All right. Very good. All right. I'm going to call this meeting to order. This is a regular meeting of the Board of County Commissioners, Hamilton County, uh, June 18th, 2020. Um, we start our meetings with silent prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. So um, let's take a moment of silent prayer. Thank you. Commissioner Summero Dumas. Oh, there we go. All right. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States, States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, nation under God, God and indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, so, <laughs> so, 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 all right, I'm going to move that we approve in the minutes of the previous session. Second. Commissioner Drehaus? Yes. Commissioner Samar Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Parks? Yes. Thank you. Uh, we have one presentation today. Greg Kesterman, the interim health commissioner, has joined us as always. Um, so Greg, I, Greg asked what he should say, and I said whatever you would like to say, Greg. <laughs> So uh, uh, your information is always very relevant to what we're doing. So um, please give us an update related to COVID-19. Sounds great. Thank you, Commissioner and Commissioners, for having me today. I'm happy to provide uh, an update. Feel free to ask any questions as well. So I'll start with the numbers. Here in Ohio, we are up to 42,000 cases with 
7,000 hospitalized and 2,600 people have died. Within Hamilton County, we have 3,300 cases here in Hamilton County, 630 hospitalizations and 181 deaths. Within our jurisdiction, so outside the city of Cincinnati, Norwood and Springdale, we have 1,816 cases of which 779 people have recovered. So that's a, a bit of good news. Um, a bit concerning continues to be this R value, reproductive value. As I've shared in the past, if the R value is above one, we continue to see the outbreak spread. When the R value falls below one, it means the outbreak's kind of dying off and less people are getting sick. Uh, today's R value is 1.48. Yesterday, for reference, it was 1.45, so only a slight increase, which I guess is good news. But when you compare it to one week ago from today, it was 0.92, so definitely a big jump over the last week. So we'll continue to watch that. There are a couple factors that I think come into play that are important and also a bit of good news. When you think about it, more people are able to get tested. So younger people, healthier people are getting tested and contributing to this R value. A month ago, young people who were healthy couldn't get a test at all. So they're now included in this calculation. Um, also, I think it's important to note uh, what hospitalizations are doing. Right now, hospitalizations continue to remain fairly flat. We're not seeing any spikes in hospitalizations. Intensive care units also remain fairly flat with regards to the number of COVID patients being admitted to them. And then lastly, we are not seeing any increase in the number of deaths. So we continue to monitor this data with some of our partners, including the Health Collaborative, our hospital systems, and our congregate care systems here in the county, and we'll, we'll keep on top of it. I just want to continue to reemphasize the importance of masking. I know it feels like summer's here and COVID-19 is gone, but it's not, as the commissioners know. And uh, so any chance I get, I just try to reemphasize wear that mask when you're in public and around people, and that's how we're going to get through this thing. I'll turn it back over to you, Commissioner, and happy to answer any questions. Thank you. And one thing I um, want to remind people of that if they do want to get tested, there are a number of testing sites throughout the county, and those sites are located on the, the public health website, public health, um, Hamilton County Public Health. And, uh, and But do call before you go because each one operates a little differently. Um, so some of them need a doctor's script. Some of them don't. Some of them you have to pay. Some of them you don't. Um, so call before you go. There's also a, a no cost testing site listed on our website today in uh, in the city of Cincinnati. So another great opportunity to get some uh, testing done. Great, thank you. Um, are there any questions from the commissioners? I have no questions. Um, Greg, I, I do. It sounds like our uptick is related to the protests that took place here in Cincinnati. Um, so, you know, an increase is not good, but I think that it's not as bad as it could be. I think that's well said, Commissioner. I think it's also, um, you know, anytime we have mass gatherings, it certainly increases risk, but I sure would hate to give all the credit for the increases to the protests currently. There are a lot of people in my day-to-day -day doings, if I'm out and about, or I even run to the grocery store that aren't doing things right. So it's easy to point a finger and say, yes, those people downtown protesting are causing this, but the same folks that are at the grocery store with me, only two out of 10 people are wearing a mask right now. Those individuals are contributing to the increase as well. I think we all need to work together to, to, to conquer this thing and to get through this. And if we pull together as a team, then we will get through it. So um, I, I don't wanna say the protests didn't have a contribution, but a lot of folks wore masks and were doing things right. So um, we just gotta all work together. That's well said, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Greg. All right. Well, thank you, as always, for jumping on, and thanks for all the work you're doing. Thank you. Um, please convey our thanks to your team. I know this is continuing to be difficult work. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, the next thing on the agenda, I'm sorry, there is a second presentation. It's the Juneteenth Proclamation. Um, I believe Commissioner Somero Dumas is going to lead this one. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam President. I have a few things to say. Uh, before I read the proclamation and also after the pro proclamation, and I'm sure that the commissioners will also have a comment. Um, but I just wanted to mention, because some people have been asking me, uh, what is the Juneteenth celebration about? Uh, when I first came into office last year, we had our first Black History celebration, along with our first 
uh, Juneteenth recognition. So this will be our second one in Hamilton County. Really excited about it. Uh, the Juneteenth is a holiday that celebrates the day that all the slaves in America um, became free. Um, Abraham Lincoln signed the order in um, 1863, but it took over two, two and a half years for that order to be uh, realized in Texas because um, te Texas was a little reluctant to make it happen. So uh, two and a half years later in 1865, uh, it became law. So I'd like to read the proclamation. I want to read a little bit out, but there are some significant areas that I think that uh, all of because it's a celebration for all of Hamilton County to be proud of. And it says, whereas Juneteenth, also known as Independence Day or Freedom Day, is an American holiday that commemorates the day June 19, 1865, the announcement of the abolition of slavery in the state of Texas was made. And whereas although most enslaved uh, slaves lived in rural areas, more than 1,000 resided in both Galveston and Houston by 1860, with several hundred in other large towns. Then planters and other slaveholders migrated into Texas from Eastern states to escape the defeats of their fighting for And whereas this movement from 1860 by tens of thousands, the enslaved population in the state of Texas at the end of the Civil War, so by 1865, there were estimated 250,000 enslaved African people in Texas. And whereas although President Abraham Lincoln had issued the Emancipation Proclamation more than two years later, earlier in 1863, the freedom of most slaves depended on the advancement of the Union Army, which brought with it enforcement of the proclamation. Whereas on June 19, 1865, Major General Gordon Granger of the victorious Union Army arrived in Galveston, Texas to declare the end of the Civil War. Granger read aloud the contents of General Order Number 3, announcing the total emancipation of those held as slaves. And whereas a historic moment would not have been possible without the courage and sacrifice of nearly 200,000 former slaves, I lost my place. Uh, and free African Americans who fought for liberty alongside more than 2 million Union servicemen. These brave individuals fought to defend God given rights of those held in bondage as property legally since the founding of the country in 1788. Whereas the scourge embedded in the history of slavery is felt by many African Americans to this day. Now therefore be it resolved that the Board of County Commissioners of Hamilton County, Ohio does hereby honor the unbreakable spirit and countless contribution of generations of Americans of this African slavery to the story of American greatness. And be it therefore resolved that the Board of County Commissioners of Hamilton County does hereby today and every day recommit ourselves to defending the self-evident truth boldly declared by our founding fathers that all people are created equal. We as a leadership of this county recognize that although we may be created equal, Americans of African heritage have faced flawed citizenship since it was granted in 1868 with institutionalized and systemic racism by government and private sectors, as these have negatively impacted the lives of African Americans, we are committed to addressing any legacy of institutionalized and systemic racism by the county government. And this is signed by all three of our commissioners. Um, Nobody's clapping but me. Thanks, Jack. But it's a really auspicious occasion. Very proud of it. And also last year when this resolution uh, was signed, uh, it went to the United Nations. United Nations recognized Hamilton County 
for being this, um, the spot that they're gonna look at, the county they're gonna look at for our work toward uh, uh, resolving systemic racism. So very, very proud of that. And they will be making an announcement in November United Nations about our efforts uh, in that area. So I have a couple other things to say. Many companies are really um, observing this day also. And so in honor of the day, um, I counted 17 companies that are honoring Juneteenth. Um, and I'm just gonna mention a couple. Uh, Best Buy, they have a paid volunteer day. Next year, they're gonna make it a formal um, holiday. General Motors is doing a time of uh, silence eight minutes and 46 seconds in honor of George Floyd. Uh, Google has uh, told all their employees to cancel all unnecessary meetings. JC Penney is making it an annual holiday. JP Morgan Chase is closing all their retail franchises and Lyft is um, going to make it a um, holiday for all of their um, companies. So we have 17 major companies. I didn't mention them all. And yes, I wanted to mention, I want to thank Cincinnati Metro that sort of voted unanimously uh, for a paid holiday for all their employees for Juneteenth Day. So at this time, I'd like to challenge all of our businesses and all our corporations and all our agencies uh, to pledge to observe Juneteenth holiday next year. Uh, it's a little late for tomorrow. But in addition to that, I said last year for Martin Luther King Day, there were so many companies, even though Martin Luther King Day is a federal holiday, so many companies that do not observe Martin Luther King Day. So I'd like to put out a challenge to our Hamilton County companies, agencies, businesses, um, to uh, for Martin Luther King Day, you have six months to do it, um, that you uh, pledge to observe that day. And I'd like to hear from those companies that are agreeing to do that. And in addition, um, and for Juneteenth of next year, which um, it's on a Saturday, if you could look at how you can observe Juneteenth Day uh, for next year. And um, that will end my report. Oh, I wanted to say one other thing. The city will be raising their flag tomorrow uh, in recognition of Juneteenth uh, Day. And as I said, our um, day will be uh, tomorrow to recognize Juneteenth. We just had our meeting today on the 18th, but we will also uh, make the 19th, of course, the official day. So that's all I have uh, right now, uh, Madam President. Uh, thank you. So it, it, Juneteenth in Hamilton County is virtual this year, isn't it? I think I, I, the celebration well, is virtual. I'm just wondering. Well, like, a yeah, we've got, Go yeah, I was just wondering, related to the resolution, um, we'll make sure to get it over to you. Um, and I don't know, you know, at, at to whom it goes, but I'm sure you figured all that out. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, it, so we'll, we'll just get it out to you. Um, you know, I, you know, it's so interesting to hear the history of Juneteenth, mm -hmm. um, and how many years it took. Uh, to get word to the slaves in Texas that they had been free uh, for over a year. It's just it's just an interesting part of our history. It's an unfortunate mm -hmm. part of our history, of course, um, but such an interesting time and, and a wonderful way to celebrate the freedom Absolutely. for all people in the United States. So, um, Commissioner Parks, comment? Yes, um, Commissioner Sumero Dumas, thank you for doing that. It was... Mm -hmm. um, your resolution was filled with facts and history. Thank you. Um, when, and I, you know, I used to live in Galveston. And so mm -hmm. I um, actually went to at least two of those celebrations and it's really wow. sad. But okay. you know, when, when I mm -hmm. think about our history and things like Juneteenth, um, you know, it sounds like it's so long ago, but mm -hmm. That was 41 years before my father was born. Mm. Okay. So, it, you know, it is it is in very recent time mm -hmm. uh, related to generations. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so, but, but thank you for introducing that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, you know, it, it occurs to me that we 
to my knowledge, I, I'm sure we don't have a Juneteenth flag, but we should probably look into that for next year mm-hmm. so that we can join in raising a flag um, in celebration of Juneteenth. So Thank let's uh, contemplate that. We've got plenty of time to make that work. Uh, yes. So we'll look into um, getting those flags. We have seven buildings. I think, Jeff, am I right? Seven buildings, seven county buildings. Um, and we can get seven flags and make mm-hmm. sure that they fly uh, in celebration uh, of Juneteenth. Uh, Madam President, I just wanted to mention that City Hall, there is a celebration at 10 o'clock tomorrow outside the city building with the raising of a flag. So thank you. Okay, great. And we also, um, Jackie, correct me if I'm wrong, from, to my knowledge, we have one comment uh, and it's related to this. And so I just want to recognize that um, Herschel Daniels uh, provided a comment via email. And so we will enter that comment for the record. And it is also uh, talked about the celebration of Juneteenth. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well done. Um, all right. Thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you. Uh, so, so uh, Jackie, am I correct that that is the only public comment that we have? That is all we have. Okay. Thank you. So we will enter that for the record. Um, we will move on then to comments of commissioners. Commissioner Summer Dumas, do you have any other comments? I just have one comment, Madam President. Okay. Just, uh, I wanted to offer my condolences to the Brooks family in Georgia and um, the killing of their uh, loved one. Uh, there are a lot of Brooks in Hamilton County. Uh, I know a few of them. I don't know if they're related, but just want to um, send my condolences to that family. That's, that's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner Parks. Um, I, I will repeat mm-hmm. what uh, Commissioner Sumero Domus said mm-hmm. in offering my condolences. Mm-hmm. And, um, and also to talk about uh, what we are doing, what, what my office is doing in terms of the resolution for uh, declaring racism as a health crises in Hamilton County. So we're we're working on it. And my ambition is to roll it out by June 30th. We should we should have a draft by then and we're thinking about so that'll be a draft. And then I'd like to have a public meeting where uh, it'll be on zoom, where the public can weigh in. And we will take uh, what they have to say to heart, and then uh, finalize the resolution for vote. Great, sounds great. Mm-hmm. Great, thank you. So, as far as so that would be a public hearing, basically. Yes. Sometime in July. Okay. Yes. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Um, so, um, I also want to offer my condolences. Uh, join my colleagues. Um, I do have a couple of other items. Just. Um, they're really reminders. The one is related uh, to the CARES Act funding as we continue to roll out programs uh, similar to the Small Business Assistance Program, the Rental Assistance Program. We most recently released $25 million of that CARES Act funding for local governments in Hamilton County. So all 49 jurisdictions got an allocation. Remember, we had set aside $30 million. Um, we took 25 per the county administration's recommendation and used the local government fund distribution method and uh, provided that allocation down. And so we have uh, we all three um, agreed to hold five aside just in case uh, we saw something that wasn't quite filling the gap or wasn't responding as we needed to. Um, so that recently happened. Uh, the city of Cincinnati, I think, um, made mention of it at their council meeting yesterday. So we were happy to be in a position to, to help. I know I speak for all three of us. Um, they have a significant budget shortfall in there um, in the position of borrowing money. Uh, and so we were able to plug part of that hole. And so, um, as I said, we couldn't have done it without the CARES Act funding from the federal government. And it's an allowable use. Uh, but every other community in Hamilton County also benefited uh, from that allocation. So um, I'm glad that we were all um, on board for that. And I, I think that will be tremendously helpful. Um, the other thing is there is, and we mentioned this yesterday, there is um, another crisis happening in our community and that is continues to be the crisis of addiction. We are seeing some pretty high numbers 
of individuals in our community who are overdosing and dying. Uh, to put that in perspective, uh, you know, we, we generally do ramp up a little bit uh, in the summertime, and we see increased numbers for ED visits, uh, 911 calls, and death numbers. But the numbers right now are higher than we have seen in a few years, and it's alarming. Uh, and so, for instance, last month, in the month of May, we had 42 deaths in Hamilton County related to overdoses. Uh, that compares to 38 last year, but we were on the decline. Uh, we were, we, we saw this nice dip in our numbers. And so unfortunately, we're not only backed up to where we were, but even higher. And in the month of June, as of yesterday, we had 32 deaths uh, related to overdoses. And that's only for part of the month. So I just want to uh, make everybody aware of that. It's, like I said, very concerning. Uh, we're seeing uh, fentanyl enter the drug supply again. There was a, a bit of a, a delay because of coronavirus, and uh, fentanyl is obviously back in the um, drug supply, and it's being mixed into heroin and cocaine and methamphetamines, and so um, sometimes people don't even know what they're using. Um, so the message out is just everyone needs to be careful uh, everyone should be carrying Narcan just in case you encounter someone or have a family member that's in recovery. Um, and, you know, we're, we've put a call into the sheriff to make sure that they continue to provide Narcan for folks that are leaving the Justice Center, which they are, and our treatment providers are doing the same. So it's just, um, it's an unfortunate statistic. I mean, we were making a lot of progress and, and we have seen a backslide here. Um, so, uh, you know, treatment is ramped up. Uh, a lot of it's been virtual, which I think has been challenging for folks. People have felt very isolated. I think that is also challenging. Um, so we're trying to get the message out that uh, people should be careful and um, always care and carry the Narcan uh, just in case. So I don't know if there are any questions about any of that, but um, it's just they're very sobering numbers. Uh, so we've got a lot going on in our community right now. Um, but this is uh, rearing its ugly head again right now. So, unfortunate. Um, all right. So, that uh, Jeff, Jeff, do you have anything for the good of the cause here? Uh, a couple of by, thank you, Madam President, a couple of by leaves and a couple of comments. Um, first and foremost, just um, to echo your uh, comments on uh, the CARES Act, um, I did just want to take a moment um, I know the board is aware of this, but I think it's it's important to say that um, uh, the the breadth of programming that we have rolled out um, in in the uh, uh, through our CARES Act funding is is it, number one is I think is a testament to the the policy vision of, of this board of county commissioners. So I thank you all three of you for for the policy vision on this. Um, but it is the the breadth of the program programming um, has taken us in all sorts of different directions. And I just really want to thank the staff that has worked on, on this programming um, because these are all people, it's not like we hired in a bunch of new staff to do this. Uh, so the, these are folks who are taking time away from their, their, uh, their jobs or being redirected from their, from their jobs, which haven't gone away um, to work on this. So everyone from uh, Holly Christman, Bridget Doherty, uh, Michelle Baltz, Jen Ketter, Bert Watts, Brian Wamsley, and then some other folks in some other offices, like in the budget office, Rob Wagner. Um, um, we have uh, Ali Kodadad in uh, environmental services. Uh, Robert Bell um, has done a, a lot of work on this. Uh, the folks over in the prosecutor's office have done a lot of work on this. Uh, so I just really wanted to take the time to thank all of these people for all they're doing. Um, we we're getting this money out we're getting it into the community we're getting it uh, directed for the public good uh, and i really am proud of the uh, the programming that we've put in place and as i look at the way uh, and, and every community is different so every community is going to use their dollars in a way um, that is uh, most reflective of that community's need but i'm just really proud of, of the program that we have put in place here we've Got a while to go. We got a lot more stuff to, to do and to roll out, um, but I'm really proud of what we put together here, and I think it's it's going to really help the community um, uh, to start the process of, of recovering from 
uh, from this pandemic. Um, and also I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Nick Crosley and Greg Kesterman and their staffs as well uh, for all of their help in this. So um, that's just one, one, of my, one of my comments, commissioners. Um, secondly, um, as an administrative item, just um, a, a reminder, I know the board is aware of this, but the administration building, the Todd B. Fortune Center for uh, County Government uh, will be opening its doors formally on July 6th. Uh, Monday, so we're still working out some procedures and processes for that, working with all the elected offices and departments in this building. Uh, so I just wanted to, I think I announced that last at our last meeting as well, but just wanted to announce that uh, again. Uh, and finally, the last of my comments before a couple of by leaves, um, just wanted to also take the opportunity to congratulate um, our my friend and our friend uh, over on Plum Street, uh, Patrick Tahaney. So. Uh, as city manager leaving for v Virginia Beach. Um, Patrick is a, a true professional, gotten to know him over the past uh, couple of years. Uh, he's brought a great approach uh, to the city manager's office. Um, the city and the county, I know it'll be a surprise for folks to hear, don't always agree on everything. Uh, there is a lot we do agree on, but sometimes we don't agree on everything. And, and Patrick and I could always find a way to disagree agreeably uh, with each other and professionally. Uh, and I think he is going to do fantastic things in Virginia Beach. So I just wanted to uh, offer publicly my congratulations to Patrick for, uh, for his moving on. It's a true loss for the region, but um, I know uh, the, the uh, city of Virginia Beach will, will be all the better for it. So uh, that concludes. Can I stop you? Can I, let me stop you there for one second. Sure. Uh, because I think we all have uh, an appreciation and a relationship with uh, Patrick Dehaney. Mm -hmm. uh, and he. Um, you know, our loss is their gain for sure. Uh, Patrick has just been a very positive, um, forward-thinking, thoughtful mm -hmm. individual when it has come to all of the issues that we have to do collectively with the city. And so I, too, um, you know, congratulate him on his next move, but uh, am very sorry to see him go. Yeah. Thank you, Madam President. And I do have two um, by leaves, um, formal by leaves here. The first, there's three by leaves on your agenda. I'm only asking for action today on two of them. Uh, the first uh, is an extension, a one month extension with the contract for uh, the county dog warden with the SPCA uh, of $156,500. Uh, this is a one month extension while we complete an RFP process uh, to finalize the transition. Uh, of our dog warden functions. Um, uh, so the administration obviously recommends approval. Uh, John Bruggen has, is on the line as well, who has been leading this process. And I do want to thank John as well, because he has just done fantastic work in, in guiding this issue and moving it forward in, uh, in accordance with the policy direction of the board. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them or defer to John as the case may be, but the administration does recommend approval of by leave item number one. Thank you, Jeff. Are there any questions? I have no questions. Um, I have no questions, but I do want to express appreciation to John and his office and, and, and Jeff too for all of the work that has gone mm -hmm. into this. So thank you. Yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you, John. It's good to see you. Um, yeah, and, and, it, and piggybacking a little bit on what Jeff said earlier, our, the administration has been working very hard on many, many issues. Yes. Uh, the CARES Act funding uh, was um, funding that was not anticipated, and it took a lot of work, and it continues to take a lot of work to figure out, uh, by way of policy direction from the board, how to get those pro programs up and running. That is no small task. And in the middle of that, John's been continuing to work on the dog warden contract, and we've got MSD. We're moving forward on some of those issues. So um, it's really been yes. uh, an impressive uh, group of, of individuals doing all this work. And, and I, too, I know I speak for the board. Uh, mm -hmm. We are very grateful for the continued work yes. of the administration um, yes. in, in kind of challenging times here. So mm -hmm. thanks, John. Thanks for doing this. Um, so I will move, sounds like we're in agreement. I will mm -hmm. move that we approve of the resolution number 13, authorizing a 156,500 one month extension to the county dog warden contract. Second. Treasury House? Yes. Commissioner Samar Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Parks? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna to skip to by leave number three. By leave number two is one that we're gonna hold 
uh, for a couple of weeks. It's not uh, it, it's not urgent that we pass that at this uh, moment in time. Um, by leave number three um, relates to setting up um, a, 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 an account for uh, we as the board knows we have CARES Act funding that we have. We also have the ability to spend against federal emergency management agency assistance um, for some of our COVID-19 related needs. And this establishes uh, essentially a fund to pay uh, to the degree that a certain expense is more appropriate for FEMA than CARES Act that we can um, uh, that we can appropriate or uh, target those expenditures uh, appropriately. Um, so, John, anything additionally you'd like to say about about that? particular item no as we a little bit a little bit as we work with departments on this um we'll be sort of triaging expenses to either the fema pot or the cares act pot with an understanding that once we go through the fema process we'll be able to reallocate what's not reimbursed by fema to the cares act great thank you yeah this is just another way of leveraging money yeah. right mm -hmm. so thank you both for for um doing this we continue to try to leverage as best we can all these dollars mm -hmm. so are there any uh, questions Adam, Adam, related Adam, to the yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, i would just like to bring up that you know when this switch was flicked um we didn't know what was going to happen we didn't know what you know what she was going to drop how we were going to do and and i i just want to give credit to this county staff for being so flexible and mm -hmm. and uh, and just so professional and meeting every emergency need so i, I i'm just going to echo that again because mm -hmm. it, it, you know just every day there was something different that mm -hmm. you that you had to adjust to that we had to bring you know as far as the fund was concerned we've been through furlough we've been through uh, salary reductions, you know, not knowing what was going to happen next, what the state was going to allocate, what was going to happen from a federal level. But because our brain trust went into the think tank, came out with really creative and 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 wonderful programs. So, kudos. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. We have the greatest staff that I've really ever worked with. So I'm just really impressed. Yeah. Thank you. All right. I'm going to move that we approve of budget adjustment 24, $5 million for federal emergency public assistance related to COVID-19. Second. Commissioner Dre House? Yes. Commissioner Samara Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Parks? Yes. Thank you, commissioners. Thank that you. would conclude my by leaves. Um, Madam, Pre good. Madam President, yeah. if I could just um, digress for a second when Jeff was talking about the CARES Act. I don't know if you can hear me. Um, just wanted to know, Jeff, just put it on the, put it under your hat to think about this. Um, as we look at using the CARES Act for those who have impa been impacted by COVID-19, I don't even know if this is an option. I think about the young people that I heard recently who have not had access to laptops. Um, I'm not necessarily asking about uh, that because of the COVID, but um, I also heard that it's only $17 a month for the ones who have laptops to be able to access the internet. And it is a, d a direct result of not being in school. So just uh, think about it. I wanted to throw it out and you guys, you know, let me know if that might qualify. Um, if I may. Uh -huh. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> if I am not mistaken, Cincinnati Public Schools is providing laptops and internet access yeah. to, um, to, to their children. I think in mm -hmm. elementary school, it mm -hmm. will be um, iPads, and for high school, it'll be laptops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're, you're absolutely right, but I did uh, hear a request for donations, whoever wanted to donate $17 for the internet uh access so maybe it's uh, maybe they have what they need now but i just wanted to throw it out to donate where um i can i can let you know but i'll, I'll check and see yeah and uh madam president if, if i could just yeah. uh, briefly so we we will definitely um explore that i think mm. as we go and, and continue just our programming 
across the board, whether it's CARES Act or whether it's through our Office of Inclusion, et cetera. Um, you know, I, I think, and to your point, um, Commissioner Summer Dumas, I think as we've been out in, even implementing some of the CARES Act programming, um, you know, I think we've found that, and we haven't done a deep dive on this, but the digital divide is still alive and, and well in many mm -hmm. respects in, in the community and just mm -hmm. finding that some of the small businesses um, that we were dealing with have you know had difficulty uh, uploading uh, documents electronically because of lack of access to uh, mm -hmm. to internet and, and other electronic means so mm -hmm. um, you know there's definitely um, a need out there to continue to make sure that our community is 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 able to operate and do business in the 21st century from a technology perspective uh, and i think uh, it is something that we should probably uh, lend some uh, uh lend some brain power to and i know uh, commissioner parks you've been giving some thought to similar things as it relates to your resolution um looking at uh, ways to help the in the community as well so we'll we'll definitely um mm. uh, talk about that amongst the administration right and see if we can coalesce some of uh, some of our current efforts to see if we can uh, assist with that okay. um and one thing if i could just real quick I, I mentioned a lot of names earlier and i apologize i missed melanie augustine from ema and i apologize for, for doing that but she's also been uh, working very hard on this so uh uh, uh not to uh throw something in at the last second here, but uh, I, I did mention a lot of people and I, I don't want to leave anyone out. So thank you, commissioners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Um, just to piggyback on the um, internet conversation. So I wonder um, the public schools outside the city, um, all the public schools districts mm -hmm. um, that are also faced with similar challenges. I do mm -hmm. wonder um, what's going on out, out in some of the other districts. So mm -hmm. it might be an interesting um, idea to reach out to the ESC to see what they know is happening out there. So um, more more to be done, I think, there, right? Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thanks. Thanks for the suggestion. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, regular agenda item. We have one. Uh, this is related to a resolution directing um, the county facilities to fly the rainbow flag uh, for LGBTQ Pride Month. So we started this last year. Uh, Nate Simon, who was my administrative aide at the time, uh, went around the floor and raised money uh, for the flags. That, again, there were self, seven uh, county buildings, and so we bought seven flags and uh, got the flags up. And we did it for Cincinnati Pride, which was um, in June last year as part of Pride Month. And so um, that, unfortunately, since I Pride has been pushed back to October, and so it is no longer part of uh, Pride. You know, we celebrate Pride in Ohio in June. And so we thought maybe uh, if we got the flags up uh, mid-June, I'll, I'll admit that we're a little late on this. Uh, the city is already flying the flag. Um, but uh, if we could get these flags up um, either later this week or early next week to celebrate Pride, and then we can revisit the issue also um, for uh, Pride in Cincinnati in October. So this is simply a way for us to celebrate the diversity in our community, to celebrate the contributions of the LGBTQ community, and make sure that people, all people feel welcome and embraced by Hamilton County. Uh, and so that is what the resolution does. Um, so are there any questions or comments related to the resolution? Uh, no comments, I support it. I have none, thank you. Mm. Thank you. All right, in that case, I'm going to move that we approve of the resolution directing county facilities to fly rainbow flags at the county buildings in honor of LGBTQ Pride Month. Second. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Commissioner Samara Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Parks? Yes. Thank you. We'll get those up timely. Um, so we have a number of consent agenda items, numbers two through 10. Are there any questions related to these items? I have no questions, Madam President. I have none, thank you. Very good, I'm gonna move then that we approve a consent agenda items two through 10. Second. Commissioner Drehaus? Yes. Commissioner Samar Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Parks? Yes. Thank you. Um, all right, so we also have an executive session on the agenda. Uh, is there anything else that we need to talk about outside of executive session? Jeff, you got anything else? Nothing else today, Commissioner. Thank you. 
Mm -hmm. Very good. Commissioners? Yes, I have nothing. Nothing. Thank you. Very good. I'm going to move that we go into executive session pursuant to RC section 121.22 G3 to conduct a conference with an attorney concerning MSD. Second. Commissioner Drehaus? Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Parks? Yes. All right, very good. So, Bridget, am I right that we stay on here? Yes, that's, that's what she said. Yes, that's what she said. I'm going to move that we go out of executive session and adjourn. Second. She's muted. You're not on. Okay. Yes. yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Parks? Yes. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.